Now I'm a very nervous public speaker. The last time I spoke publicly was at my brother's wedding and that didn't go too well. <laughs> His marriage is fine, the speech wasn't so, so good. So uh, I'm going to bring you through the ancient history of beer from the very beginning of the time up to about 2000 BC. So the very first slide you're going to see is uh, the Low Cell Venus. She's a 22,000 year old uh, Paleolithic carving found in the early 1900s on a cliff face in a small valley in the Dordogne. She's been variously interpreted by anthropologists and archaeologists as a fertility symbol or of some vague ritual significance. Her left hand rests on her pregnant belly, while in her right hand she holds aloft a lunar symbol, which, is, uh, which has 13 lines reflecting the lunar cycle, or others have interpreted it as the horn of plenty. More recently, Pat McGovern at the University of Pennsylvania has reinterpreted that object as being, in fact, a drinking horn. So his suggestion means that this woman could, in fact, simply be a depiction of a fat, naked lady <laughs> who's, who's had a few too many beers <laughs> and is, in fact, the earliest depiction of a human being consuming alcohol. So we, uh, where and when uh, is the, are the earliest origins booze? Well, uh, you have to look to space, first of all. Um, what's coming up next are methanol clouds. And these have been discovered by uh, astronomers some 26,000 uh, light years away. Uh, so the fact is that ethanol and methanol are the very basic uh, building blocks of life on Earth. Uh, simple sugars excreting, alco excreting alcohol would have been used to feed, uh, to nourish single cell microbes at the very beginning of time. So you could say that alcohol itself played a part in the creation of life on Earth. It took a little longer for uh, more complex organisms to make their way to the bar. Uh, Robert Dudley of the University of California proposed what's called the drunken monkey hypothesis after observing Panamanian howler monkeys uh, who had a distinct penchant for fermenting berries. Uh, other experiments carried out on rats uh, where they've been placed in cages with trays of beer. Uh, they display somewhat more familiar human traits in that uh, they will consume one or two drinks before their meal and then once every two or three days, they'll indulge in quite a bit more alcohol. So they'll basically go binging every three days or so. <laughs> so we know that there's a predisposition in the natural world, in animals, to consuming and enjoying alcohol uh, in the animal kingdom. So as, as Pete Brown says in his book, uh, A Man Walks Into a Pub, uh, even elephants eat fermenting berries to get pissed, and we're much smarter than they are. So how and when did we start to drink beer? Well, the earliest alcohol consumers uh, would have been in the Paleolithic and would have come across and encountered alcohol <laughs> as a happy accident. Perhaps a hunter-gatherer would have uh, uh, ate some fermenting berries in, the, in the, the bowl of a tree or something and discovered the joys of alcohol that way. Um, anthropologists estimate that early hunter-gatherers uh, perhaps spent about five hours a day or at minimum 14 hours a week to sustain a small family grouping. So one of the big questions in anthropology and archaeology is why did people start farming and take up the, the, the daily hard grind of farming as opposed to the nice easy life of a hunter-gatherer? Well, there's been a debate raging in anthropology and archaeology for 100 years, which has been reignited recently by Pat McGovern, um, as to whether people started farming because of a desire for bread or a desire for beer. And Pat McGovern has suggested that, in fact, it was a desire for beer that convinced people to take up farming, which would mean that our sedentary lifestyles and, and civilization itself came about because of a desire for beer, which you could take the leap and say that beer is essentially the meaning of life. <laughs> so, so this takes us forward. The, 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 the very first physical evidence of alcohol production on the, on, uh, by humans on the planet was again discovered by Pat McGovern, who I worship, basically. Uh, Pat is a paleochemist. He discovered residues in pottery vessels in Jiao in northern China dating back to 9,000 years ago, uh, which gave rise to a, a, a basic a rice wine or a rice beer. This is the epic of Gilgamesh. It's the earliest documentary evidence of beer. It tells the tale of Gilgamesh. Uh, the very earliest written recipe is a Sumerian clay tablet about 2000 BC, this is it here, which describes, it's the very earliest recipe written down, it describes how to make and manufacture beer. So we're right at 2000 BC, so what I'll do is I'll finish up with, uh, with an ancient Mesopotamian drinking song. Uh, I'm not going to sing it because I don't know how it sounds, but uh, it could easily be uh, revived and included in the repertoire of any self-respecting GAA team. Uh, it goes a little bit like this. Sweet beer is in the Buninu barrel. I don't know what Buninu was. 
Cupbearer, waiter, waitress, servants and brewer gather around. When I have an abundance of beer, I feel great. I feel wonderful. By the beer, I am happy. My heart is full of joy. My liver is full of luck. <laughs> when I am full of gladness, my liver wears a dress befitting a queen, which, which, which is exactly how I feel after a feed of pints. So, thank you.